and, and has the highest population is because they have a flatter land, they're able to grow more grain and have more cattle. As such, this allows them to create a higher population and well, with a bigger population, you can also consolidate power uh, to a larger extent because you can also control more in this regard. And Norway has the least amount of population and while they are also very close to consolidating power not long after Denmark, well, they live not entirely off grain as such as well. Fish and dried fish is probably more common in this regard because it's the, what they have access to. In Sweden, it's a little bit of a mixture of both. Um, there's about 100,000 people less in terms of uh, the population around about the same time. Uh, and well, they live off a combination of grain and things like fish and also off, obviously again meat. Wild animals are eaten as well, but hunting is time consuming, it takes an effort, you can't do this every day. So eating wild animals is done, but not as often as we may imagine. Uh, so, well, in terms of things about popular culture again, you know, if we're looking at sort of these ideals, um, Vikings are always explained, we always maybe have this idea of these massive guys, you know, like two meters or tall, like, like him over there that you just saw walk by. Uh, that's maybe the idea we have about what Vikings look like. And while I guarantee, I'm pretty sure there would have been people of that size. This is generally probably not the case. We have descriptions from uh, sources in England, for instance, describing exactly. See, and now, this is what you'd imagine a Viking would look like. But to be fair, I'm actually about the average height of what a Viking is. Now, well, I've been telling you that for a long time. Now, what we know from different sources, in England they explain Vikings as being extremely tall, these massive people. And if we look at it in terms of maybe historical uh, base as well, it's because people were shorter back then. So the average height of this man here, he's 179, that's the same height as what I am. Now, that would be, even be considered quite tall for a Viking. If you lived in England, your average height may have been around 150 to 160. So if you're looking at somebody that's about 160 to 170, which is the average height here in Scandinavia, that 10 centimeters is gonna give you a bit of a difference. You go, look at that. So while we may imagine them to be two, two and a half meters tall, not necessarily the case either. They're just slightly taller than what people would have been in other places. And you can even see certain things such as doorways giving a good indication of that in England. Doorways are a lot smaller because, well, you don't need to be as tall to get through them and that sort of thing. Like that. But these are sort of ideals that we get pushed along through what, again, popularism sort of wants to give us. So not necessarily something that's actually true in this regard. Now, obviously, you know, as I said, we're able to recreate this man with 90% of accuracy, and we figured out so much information about him. Well, we figured he needed a name, and well, the competition here at the museum was held. He was this close to being called Justin Bieber. Um, uh, and how shame he wasn't, though. He does very much look like a Justin Bieber, to be fair. I would have known. He ended up getting called Lefer, but Lefer was uh, very good for us uh, in figuring out lots of other things as well. What a common man may have looked like and what he may have dressed like, for instance. So, we have dressed him in this regard. Again, I talked a little bit about the ideals of the Viking suits, right? Uh, everybody wearing leather and all this sort of stuff. Probably not the way either. Now, again, if you think about it, I mean, leather is also an expensive item because if you're not killing animals as often as, you know, to eat them and all this sort of stuff, using leather goods means that you wouldn't just use these for frivolities, like wearing them on your clothes. You use leather to make important things like bags or belts, things that are gonna be of use. Uh, now, clothing is more likely produced out of things that you can do uh, a lot easier and that are more replenishable. Things like wool, which you can actually regrow, because if you don't kill the animal, you know, the wool grows back. So you can actually produce things like this. Now, if you are a commoner, well, you're more likely to look like this. You'd have very dull colors, very simple clothing, more practical. Now, I'm a bit more fancy in my regard, you can probably tell. Uh, I mean, you know, I've got a few uh, good indications to that. First off, obviously, the sword is gonna tell you that I have money, but outside of that, things like the types of materials I wear. So these materials I have on here, they are more difficult to produce, and as such, this would show off that I have wealth and sort of status. Um, now, wealth and status, you know, it's the same as today. You go out, you buy fancy clothes because you want to show off that, uh, you know, I've got money, I, I buy like the latest Gucci or whatever, I don't know. I don't buy fancy clothes, <laughs> I'm a bum. But that's a whole nother story. But uh, in that regard, you know, like fancy items and that sort of thing, you know, weapons or clothing or even sort of things like jewelry. And we look at things towards the end of the Viking era, uh, and well, things like coins become an ideal of what a status symbol would be. So coins were carried quite commonly by people here in the north, and we find lots of different finds of these in grave finds, and also just uh, knowledge of written knowledge from outside sources. 
Um, so lots of different things like Adam and Brown, for instance, writes about the fact that they were quite well kept and even uh, um, a few other sources as well. But I don't know, what is that, what do you guys think about Vikings? Are they, uh, no? No, no, no. I, I mean, definitely. If we compare it to us today, you know, probably. So you don't wash your clothes very often, I bet. No, but that's just it. I mean, I don't even do it now. To be fair, and I wear these every day, like you know. So no, but I think in that regard, you're probably right. I mean, if we compare it to us today, obviously it's going to be a big deal. But it depends, I suppose, a little bit on who you ask. I mean, um, there's a general called Ivan Fadlan. Now, Ivan Fadlan went to visit the Rus Viking, uh, Vikings who have been Russia and Ukraine, and in doing so, he got to witness how they washed. Now, he was not impressed whatsoever. He said they were the most dirty beast that he had ever met, uh, and was actually thoroughly disgusted. Now, he wrote down how they washed and stuff. went, basically. According to him, well, uh, what would happen is on a daily basis, they would have and slave come up with a bowl of water and some sort of washing container. And then well, this person comes up, washing their hair, and, you know, they take a big swig in their mouth and spit it back out and blow their nose and all this sort of stuff and feeling quite unfresh. Well, the bottle you give them back to the slave and step into the next person. Now, well, you use a good sense of water, you know, and you're going to use it. And the bottle will be passed around the table. You're going to be sitting around that area. Well, everybody gets to share in every bottle. You might as well, yeah, not exactly fresh. But um, again, as I said, it was a matter of opinion because this was uh, a common sort of practice, apparently. We know on average Vikings wash once a week because we have the, week, the, the word in Swedish Lerda, which comes from the Lerda Dog, which is washing them. So this could be the day that you the word and wash itself and wash itself. And obviously, there are other ways. slob who drank and embezzled everything but I had sworn never to leave him Freya Sala Farm I've inherited the estate from my ancestors 
My family have been living here for generations, and I also had a good life at my home with my husband Harold. Until the day you have ruined us all, feasting and drinking. The gods know that we will soon have it even worse than the slaves. We might even have to marry off Sigrid. Think about that, you bastard. Should I be forced to marry off my daughter? I'll show you who's the ruler here. Without silver, you're no ruler for anything. We need at least three barrels. Bring your best men and sail off to Kernogord with slaves and leather. Come home within two summers or it's over. Yes, Renfried. Are you going to ruin my life? Marry off to some old slob! Don't you worry, Siegfried. You can trust your father. Let the seer predict your journey, Harold. I see hunger, blood flooding, robbed silver. journey began in Birka. He had to borrow leather and slaves from my cousin. Thor will calm down soon, Ulbjorn. Wish for taking Torsten's gold. What do you say, Torke? Well, I say beautiful goods traveling. <laughs> Worth a lot of silver. Harold, I am with you on your journey. And may Freya protect you. Father, please hurry back. We are going to Kernogord, and after two summers, we'll be back home. They sailed across the sea, up the rivers, traveled over land and along new rivers. After two lunar months, they finally approached Kernogord. I can see the city! How many steeples can you count with just one eye, Torque? <laughs> <laughs> Strong and healthy slaves, real ermine fur for sale, and young and beautiful slaves. <laughs> Harold had sold all leather and half of the slaves, but they were still lacking a barrel of silver. We must continue and sell the rest of the slaves in Miklogord. There they pay twice as much. The seer has spoken about the robbers along the river. Beware, Harold. Everything. The silver, slaves, and Toki was dead. Harold arranged a funeral pyre where the flames brought Toki's spirit to Valhall, and our life back home at the farm had turned into a nightmare. Harold, we are sick. 
and have almost no food left. Father, please come home soon. They finally arrived at Miklagord. Never had they seen a richer city, but they had nothing to sell, so they couldn't buy anything. They saw Aya Sophia, the holy church of wisdom. The god of Christianity's house was like heaven on earth. Silver, Harold. Do not forget the silver. Yes, Renfried. Yes. They fought in the Emperor's army to earn the silver. Blood has flowed in rivers. What was Harold's reward? missing more than two barrels. We must move on, Harold. On the other side of the sea, they carried north, through forests, over high mountains. They followed the rivers on to Germania's plains and arrived at the kingdom of Dane. They came to Hedeby. A horrific place. Finally! The sea! The ship! Over there! They're Norwegians! They're armed for combat. Yet there's hope to save the farm and our glory. They sailed with the Norwegians. They plundered and burned. Villages, cities, and a monastery on Michael's Rock. Will you be back soon, Harold? Will you bring anything with you? Yes, Renfried. Silver! Six barrels! Finally, they went home. The fighting was over. They fought. Pirates! My silver! Save my silver! Save my silver. I bet that the Valkyries already have taken him to Volvo. Yes. There is surely a feast there now. And so my tale ended happily. Well, this time. <laughs> we arranged a feast, seldom seen. My beloved daughter. Next year we'll take Sentland, Harold. Do never let me rest, Frank Reed. 